Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to the Ganzo Experience. I am David Ganzo Mamano with yet another great episode every Wednesday morning of the Ganzo Experience. Today I have on the show uh, a wonderful new friend who is based in Charlotte, North Carolina. His name is Jack Tompkins. Jack, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, David. This is going to be great. I'm already bonded already and looking forward to the rest of the conversation. I, I know it like instant friends before, before we hit record, <laughs> right? So, right. um, so I don't want to turn anybody off to the podcast because we're going to be talking about your expertise, no offense, but how to use data uh, to uh, get a hold of and grow your business. Now, you know, we were joking that for a lot of ADHD, hyper, you know, just fast moving entrepreneurs, they want to they want to grow, invent and be creative and sell. And then the word data, they're like, oh, I got to maybe give us some hives, you know, uh, but we're going to show them how they can be friends with the word and the concept of data, data or data. What do you say? I say data, but data? either yeah. way, I'm not, I don't have a strong preference. <laughs> <laughs> You're not married to, to data. I'll say data. I don't know what I say. Data, data. I think I say data too. So yeah, there we go. As a, as an ADHD entrepreneur myself, I don't say the word that much. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's yeah. There's, there's a lot of use cases for that type of entrepreneur to use data though. So we'll talk more about that. Yeah, no, that's great. So first and foremost, Jack, um, so your company's called uh, Pineapple Consulting. Yes. Uh, why pineapple? Do you, do you like pineapples? I do. That was kind of where it started. Um, but originally from Connecticut, moved down to beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina. And Southern hospitality is very much a thing here. So I did not want to be like Jack Tompkins and Associates. We both know I couldn't have data in my company name because that would scare people off. So I went with a very friendly, welcoming, hospitality-based pineapple symbol. And it's worked out well. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I mean pineapple... Uh, I think most people like pineapples and it is, it's kind of a happy, when you think of a pineapple, it's kind of a happy fruit. It's like yeah. a ha happy association, right? It, yeah. A lot of people will associate it with vacation too, on a yeah. beach, drinking a pina colada out of a pineapple kind of thing, which is the opposite of data. Right. So I tried to match yeah. the two together. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had a drink out of a pineapple, but that is, I'm going to put that on my bucket list. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Very cool. So Pineapple Consulting, uh, Jack Tompkins. Jack, so before we get into how entrepreneurs can actually enjoy the concept of studying data, um, let's talk about you. Let's talk about, so you were a corporate guy, uh, suit tie, probably showing up at a corporate office, all that stuff. And then you took the leap to enter the world of entrepreneurship. Tell us about that journey. I did. Yes, it was, it was kind of fun. It was a roller coaster from day one and still is. Um, but to your point, kind of standard story, right? Went in the corporate world from college, loved it, you know, all good stuff, good people, good work, but it wasn't quite fulfilling enough, wanted to do my own thing. So split off. And I had two previous executives of the company they used to work for, they had split off and done other things, positions to hire me. So I was talking with them and they're like, all right, day one, as soon as you're officially gone from the company that we all used to work for, let us know. And we've got a bunch of things queued up for you. So I was like, all right, great. So day one of an day one of being a full-time entrepreneur, I got them both on the phone. I was like, hey, I'm I'm finally, I did it. I'm gone. Let's talk. What should we work on first? And they're like, oh man, that's great. Congratulations. We'll let you know if we have anything that comes up. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> so as much as my story is kind of standard, I think that was the one piece that was, it made me laugh on day one because there's just nothing else I could do other yeah. than kiss my two biggest promises away and have fun with the rest. So what'd you do? I mean, you take a deep breath and had an anxiety attack and then what happened? Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was kind of like something I had, I just had to laugh at and had to figure out, all right, where the heck am I going to get other business from? And obviously I had done a little bit of networking stuff. It was building up on the side. So there were a couple irons in the fire, but had to really start from pretty much complete scratch. Um, which honestly I kind of enjoy because mm -hmm. there's nothing that makes me appreciate the good times, like knowing what the bad times look like. That's true. I used to have a boss. I'll call him out. Steve Chartrain, great guy. When I, when I got out of college, one of my first bosses in radio and he, he would say that he would say, David, you got to have the bad times to appreciate the good times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and then he gave me a lot of great advice. Another one. Now, I don't know if you could, if you're watching this, you might be able to see my profile. Let's just say I do not have a small nose. And he also would say, 
some of his advice would be, uh, David, don't ever do cocaine because with that nose, it would be a very expensive habit. So he was just <laughs> full of great advice, you know. <laughs> a lot of good one-liners. Yeah, that's a good boss. <laughs> a lot of good one-liners. Yep, yep. So uh, this is a little rated R, but I'll say it anyway. Steve Chartrand ism. He would also tell me another one of his sayings were, David, someday you'll have the world by the balls. Don't let go for a better grip. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I uh, like it. That's a I good imagine you learned a lot from him. <laughs> I learned, and this was, you know, a long time ago, right? 1991. So yeah, 92. Yeah. So funny. But, uh, but anyway, Steve Chartrain, great guy. Get to know. But uh, Jack Tompkins, we're back to you. So, uh, so, so what year was that? What year was, uh, did you hang your shingle? Uh, 2020, I went full time. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was, I was at the time I was 26, um, 28 now. And uh, it was, I think two weeks into the pandemic, which I was like, all right, this thing's basically over, mm -hmm. which now I look back and laugh at, of course, but um, yeah. it wasn't a terrible year, all things considered mm -hmm. to start a business. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot of uh, new opportunities opened up. The, the world uh, became your prospect list now with the Zoom. People became more and more accustomed to having Zoom meetings. So you could be talking to somebody in Spain and it's normal, right? So, yeah. Whereas before, maybe you would have, you know, maybe your mindset would be like the Charlotte, North Carolina area, right? So, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. It opened up a lot of those doors. I was actually just on the phone with a client who was in Germany this morning. And would I have thought of that before? Probably not. Yeah. But it was kind of cool because half the people that I talked to wanted nothing to do with data. Holy crap, there's a pandemic. What are we going to do? Data is the last thing on the list. The mm -hmm. other half was data is the only thing we're going to invest in because we need to know exactly what we're spending our money on and what's working best for us. So it, it kind of worked out well. It split my market for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. <clears throat> All right. So now we're going to get into that four-letter word that, uh, you know, kind of gives anxiety attacks to entrepreneurs. Uh, like I said, I mean, I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of great business owners that are, you know, analytical and data-driven. Uh, but I, I, I think uh, there, there's a good majority of startup entrepreneurs that are, you know, a little bit more sales oriented, a little bit more, you know, creative side of the brain oriented uh, and data, you know, might, might make them a little dizzy, but so give us, give us, you know, just walk us through the journey of how using data can help us, uh, you know, get a grip of our business and let us, and then continue to grow and scale the business. Absolutely. So I'll say this up front, hopefully keep everybody engaged as we go through the details of data, but my favorite clients and the ones who get the most value from it are non-data people. They absolutely hate data. So what we do is try and make it look less like data. So everything we do, it's in the field called data visualization, which is essentially creating a dashboard. If you want to reduce it down to making a pretty picture out of the numbers, because nobody wants the Excel sheet that's just columns and rows and endless nonsense. I don't even like that and I'm a complete data nerd. So putting it, things into your brand colors, making fun graphs that you can interact with that's on a website, it starts to feel a lot less like data. And for the ADHD entrepreneur or even the average entrepreneur who just wants to do their thing, make their widget, whatever it is, taking a quick health check of your business because of the data and just checking a dashboard it literally takes 15 seconds. Boom. Okay. This one's good. Revenue's up, profits down, conversion rates down. Let's figure out why conversion rates down and boom. Now you've got a strategy. So that's sort of the overview concept, not obviously the inner workings of it, but that's what we go for. It's all about being more data driven, but in the easiest way possible. Very cool. So when you start working with a new client, what are, what are, what are some of the first steps that you do to quote unquote, stop the bleeding and get them on the data track. <laughs> right. <laughs> so big one is, is basically what's going on in your business, right? Something that every entrepreneur knows kind of like the back of their hand, right? Here's the things that are happening for me. We start with some KPIs to start. So key performance indicators. What are the big things in your business? And I honestly, I focus on one thing to start. So I have an example. Um, I have a transportation client logistics guy. Very simple business model, right? Package, drive package from house one, drop package off, drive to house number two, drop package off, et cetera. So the conversation was basically, okay, we know there's a whole lot of data involved there. There's efficiency stuff. There's blah, blah, blah. There's revenue involved, et cetera. The one big thing, 
and this I encourage every entrepreneur to look at this if you're looking into being data driven. What is the one big thing that you need? For him, it was how many stops did I make that day? Because from how many stops, that meant okay, I probably delivered two or three packages per stop, and that led to X amount of revenue, and I was so and so efficient, and et cetera, et cetera. And then the domino kept falling, and the snowball kept rolling. So that is the first part of the conversation. What KPIs are we talking about? Let's start with the big one and go from there. Excellent. So I see the book. Uh, if you're if if you're watching this Ganzo family on uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, uh, so Jack, uh, uh, I think it's your left shoulder, right? If I'm, if I'm, uh, yes, uh, next to your left shoulder is the book traction. Uh, so I know, uh, Gino Wickman who wrote the book. He's been on my podcast now once, but twice, uh, one of my favorite guys, one of the most talented guys in the world of entrepreneurship, in my opinion. Uh, and, uh, I'm even good friends with Rob Dubay, who he profiles in the book, uh, with image one. So it's one of my favorite books. I've read it. I've listened to it many, many times. Do you, do you incorporate traction into what you're doing? Because a lot of what traction is about is about, uh, measuring, measuring data in a, uh, uh, and I don't think they ever call it data, right? I mean, you're taking a big uh, jump here to be like, it's data. Uh, but uh, do you, do you, do you incorporate some of the, uh, the, the traction philosophies and strategies in what you do? So a little bit, I will say, so that is a very new book. I actually just got it two days ago from somebody who was an EOS implementer. So I haven't read it fully yet, but I've had conversations about EOS and the book and stuff. Um, so from what I gather, it's very, it's very performance tracking. If you don't want to call it data, is that a fair? I like so, that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Tracking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it feels very much the same in practice. It, it ends up being pretty much data, right? So yeah. It is along the same line as those concepts, again, from what I understand without actually reading the book fully, but it is, let's see how you're doing and let's see how you can do better in the simplest form possible. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. What are, what are, uh, uh, in your opinion, what are a lot of the things that entrepreneurs are doing wrong? Doing wrong. Oh, good question. Um, specifically from a data lens. Yeah. Okay. So I would say some big ones are there's a bit of like analysis paralysis. So there's obviously folks that don't use their data at all. I would say that's an issue. Um, I, I'm as about as data driven as you can be, but I use my gut instinct quite a bit. So I, there's a good balance between the two. Don't think I'm just saying only use your data and only pay attention to that. But some folks will get into the data world and say, great, I know this is important. I know I have to use my data because there's a lot of good stuff in there. So they start pulling all these things and making all these one-off Excel reports. And then they end up in this analysis paralysis state where, okay, I've got 30 numbers I'm trying to look at and I can't make any decisions from it because there's too many numbers. And I don't know which one's going up and which one's bad and which one's good, et cetera, et cetera. It, hence going back to the, let's focus on one to start. But analysis paralysis happens quite a bit when you dive into data, take a baby step, don't dive two feet in head first into the deep end of the pool kind of thing. Um, and the other one is not making things updatable or easily updatable, I should say. So if you are doing some reporting, make sure it's easy to update. And there's a lot of ways to do that. But if it's not easy to update, you're not going to use it. I'm not even going to use it, right? So those would be two big things in the dataverse that that I've seen. Oh, the dataverse. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you make, how do you make, you know, how do you personally make data fun for the entrepreneur? Yeah, it's a good question because that's that is my biggest challenge, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the most boring subject. How do we make it entertaining? Um, I'll go back to kind of what I said at the beginning of making it not feel like data. So, if you're picturing a dashboard, think of some headline KPIs. Meaning, let's just think revenue, and then a big green up indicator if it's better than the previous month, or a big red down indicator if it's worse than the pre previous month. So there you go. You have some context and you're immediately feeling like, okay, I know kind of directionally where I'm heading. Then you've got some trend graphs. So you can see over time over the past six months, my revenue has done this kind of wavy line, right? Well, where does that show me that I'm going? And it's kind of a, it's a very fun strategic exercise to look at a data dashboard in the context of, well, let me just look at the pictures, right? Speedometer gauge. Am I in the red or am I in the green, right? So those types of context things that make data visual, I think makes it a lot more fun, a lot more usable, most importantly. Yeah, yeah. So like just graphically pleasing to the eye. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Visually appealing. Yep. 
Yeah, visually appealing. I like that. Yeah, and I I know a lot of you know totally different subject, but I know that a lot of um, financial uh, advising companies now will use graphs to show people's like their investments, where they are, the growth, the loss, whatever, the overall wealth, uh, and it makes it you know easier and more fun to track, right? Instead of just looking at numbers, right? Because let's face it, half of us you know in the world are you know probably very comfortable with looking at spreadsheets and numbers and the other half aren't the other half we'd rather like see some pretty pictures <laughs> you know right um and uh so that's that's fantastic um yeah. what are what are as an entrepreneur what are some of the challenges that you've had as a business owner good question um scalability is one thing so a lot of what i do is uh, i call it being a fractional analyst so everybody's familiar with the fractional cfo and whatever part-time outsource, whatever role you want to fit into. Fractional analyst is not something that's very common, but it's basically, hey, you've got an Excel problem. Great. Send it over to me. Hey, you want a fully automated web-based dashboard? Great. Let's build it together. Kind of anything in between. So scaling with that has been interesting because everything I do, everything I have done, everything that I will do is totally custom. And I really, really like that. It's meant to be custom for the client. I don't want the one size fits all because I actually replace a lot of those for my clients. So how do I scale Jack's time versus the revenue? Obviously people is the biggest way to do that, but scaling with a custom product has been a very interesting business challenge for me, I'll say. Any ideas on how you're going to solve that issue? Uh, more people, better training, better documentation, things like that. The more efficient that I can be, the more efficient I can make my team, um, the better we can be, right? In theory, we charge based on value and sort of flat fee, not hourly. So the more efficient we can be, obviously, the more we can scale. Yeah, very good. Um, so just to really break it down into layman's terms, what are, uh, let's say that an entrepreneur is, you know, startup, Maybe they're doing a, a few hundred thousand dollar in business. They want to get to a million. What are some of the data principles that they could put in place at a very early stage? Like what should they be tracking? And what are what are some of the data strategies that you would recommend so that you know they're they're growing with just, you know, just solid bones, if you will? Yeah. No, it's a good starting point, right? And even if you are a million looking to 10 million or anything like that, the framework still kind of applies. Um, it'll be at least two things I've, I've said, but worth repeating. One, start with the one big thing. And if you already have some revenue tracked, great. What's the next big thing, right? So kind of take it one at a time. Um, two, make everything easy to update. Again, those are the two that I've mentioned already, but if it's not easy to update, you won't use it. So as you're building that data foundation, keep those two in mind and then make it something that you actually want to look at. And there's a difference between, okay, I know there's value in this versus I actually want to see like, how am I doing? How are my sales reps doing? Who's doing the best? Who's most profitable? Things like that. What marketing channel is working the best? What campaign really hit home with my audience or whatever? Whatever is your passion there, I say, go for it. Make sure there's data in the background. Whatever software you're using, check out the analytics capabilities of it because everybody will have a default one. Most of them are crap. Um, but check that out and make sure it's something that you can actually use. So go one big thing, make sure whatever you're reporting you're doing is easy to update and then go with your passion, do whatever data really makes you excited to look at it. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Jack, you may be one of the smartest 28 year olds that I've ever spoken to. So congratulations. <laughs> it just sound that way. Cause of data, I promise <laughs> one trick pony. Uh, so, well, Jack, thank you so much. Like if people want to learn more, get in touch with you, uh, do you offer free consultations, all that stuff? I mean, how, how can we, uh, how can we let our Gonzo family reach out to you? Yeah. So I, I am always open for talk and shop. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite part of being a small business owner. Um, so definitely feel free to reach out LinkedIn, my website, which is pineapplecf.com as in pineapple consulting firm.com. Um, ways to contact me, videos of dashboards, examples of dashboards, all good stuff, but absolutely open to talking shop. Um, it's like, seriously my favorite thing to do in small business. And thank you so much, David, for having me on, man. Excellent. Hey, uh, really appreciate it, Jack. Thank you so much. Congratulations on all your, your early great success. 
Uh, and I wish you massive continued success. Thank you so much for sharing some heartbeats with us today. Appreciate it, David. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you, Gonzo family, for listening and or watching the Gonzo Experience. Again, every Wednesday morning, we have a brand new episode. We've been doing this for six years, folks. Uh, I was podcasting when there was like three three podcasters. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I've been doing it for a while. Love doing it. Thanks for being part of the family. Please like us, share us, all that great stuff. If you do want to connect with me, uh, I am at davidmamano.com. And if you want a personal introduction uh, to Jack, you can email me at david at davidmamano.com. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day and make sure to stay awesome.